you, Monica, for sitting down with me. It's a pleasure to be here, Mark. Now, you've been involved in Western Canadian ag for like 25 years now or so. How did you get started in this and, and why do you love it so much? What keeps you in it? Well, actually my start in the agriculture industry is a little bit by accident. Um, I actually, my formal training, I have a greenhouse major and after working in that business for an extremely short period of time, um, I changed into agriculture and just loved the people, loved the diversity of activities, and also the, the sense that there's always new discoveries and constant opportunities for learning. And so, you know, getting into the business, I thought, yeah, I'll try this for five years and then maybe like go into travel and tourism or something, but uh, agriculture just uh, kept my attention. And uh, at this point in time, I really have no intention of, of leaving it. You're now general manager for Alberta Seed Processors. It's a not-for-profit organization that represents 68 seed and grain processing facilities in Alberta and BC. You sit on the Seeds Canada board representing Alberta seed processors. How has being a board member of Seeds Canada been of benefit to you and Alberta seed processors? So part of the, the heritage of how Alberta seed processors came to be involved in Seeds Canada is related to the legacy organizations. So to sort of back up a couple years, Alberta Seed Processors became a member of the Canadian Seed Trade Association. That decision was made uh, shortly after I became their general manager, insofar as we looked at what we were doing in Alberta and looking at future opportunities and the necessity to be connected with a larger ag industry. There was a feeling amongst our board of directors at that time and currently now because we continue to have our membership in CSTA and now Seeds Canada, that being connected to the larger industry and knowing what um, the issues and things were going on in the industry was very, very important to um, the association as a whole and then you know, as a trickle down effect to our members. We were also um, on the board of the Canadian Seed Institute, which is you know, one of the legacy organizations. And uh, many of our um, seed cleaning plants are RSEs or registered seed establishments. So we had a sort of a dual connection to Seeds Canada organization. When Seeds Canada was um, formed, they had a mandate to include all sectors of the seed industry, including processors, which legacy organizations, aside from CSI, really didn't recognize the processors as a kind of an entity. It was more just seed companies. So Seeds Canada mandate to really include and make sure that each sector of the, the seed industry is represented is um, you know, right in the mandate. So when you sit on an organizational board, the first sort of order of business mark is to look after the organization. So bringing wants and needs of Alberta seed processors into Seeds Canada is really a secondary reason for being on the Seeds Canada board. The primary reason is to build Seeds Canada into an organization that really is national in scope and really does listen to all sectors of the industry. So that's job number one. Um, and so the secondary benefit to to Alberta Seeds proce processors is just, you know, kind of bringing processing attitudes and, um, you know, nuances into the board because, of course, some of the legacy organizations tended to be, you know, more on the production or the business side of 
of seeds companies. So it's, it's been a great benefit. Um, the benefit to me personally has been vast. And again, I started out in this business and have stayed because I look for opportunities to learn and expand. And again, as you know, um, everybody that you interact with, you have the opportunity to learn. And so the personal development that I've already to date uh, gleaned from being part of the Seeds Canada board has been vast. When I interviewed you last year, you said, and I quote, we were talking about you becoming a board member of Seeds Canada. And you, you said, Rome was not built in a day, but I can envision Seeds Canada being relevant to all sectors of the value chain. 18 months later, is it now relevant to all sectors of the value chain, do you think? So I really believe um, that the culture and the mandate of Seeds Canada is absolutely on that track. And um, part of the discussions at this annual general meeting, you know, over the last couple of days, there has been a lot of conversation about including other parts of the value chain. And there is um, intent on the board of directors to communicate with the management of Seeds Canada about how to, you know, communicate um, beyond just the seed industry as sort of a nutshell. So yes, definitely we're, we're on that track. I'm gonna keep throwing out these old quotes from you, bear with me. You also said last year, years ago, we saw some big changes in the oil seed sector. Industry amalgamation is nothing new. And I think the people who started looking at this amalgamation concept five or six years ago, were looking at this trend towards collaboration and realized we should be proactive and plot our own course, end quote. It's the middle of 2022 now, and Seeds Canada has spent 18 months plotting that course. What do you feel is the biggest success you've had as a board? And on the flip side of that, what's the biggest hurdle to now get over? So one of the biggest successes, Mark, is amalgamating for organizations. And uh, um, my past uh, tenure with crop protection businesses, I've lived through I don't know how many logo changes on business cards, be it different ownership, uh, different ownership uh, structures, and then moving into a multinational, and then part of that seeing, um, you know, different amalgamations happen within that organization. So I, I understand how corporate culture has a huge impact on human capital. And so the ability for Seeds Canada to hire an executive director who had experience in amalgamation um, is, is huge. And getting staff together all while still having to operate a business. So on uh, client service ends of it, the former CSI services uh, essentially went uninterrupted. Now, we have to consider that there was a global pandemic, you know, national and as well as provincial mandates as to how you could interact with, you know, your, your stakeholders and your clients. Um, putting all of that aside, that was, you know, relatively uninterrupted. Um, so I think that's huge to, to get that through. And again, that does take time and to sort of say, oh, we're done, take it off the list. That is an ongoing process, really. And any company or organization that has gone through an amalgamation really sees it as, you know, it's a journey, maybe not a destination. And that's very, very smart. So that was probably one of the biggest successes. As far as what's still to be done, there is uh, certainly a long, long list. And I have to say that I am continuously very 
proud to be part of a, a management or a, a board group that looks at stakeholders that maybe aren't necessarily directly sitting at the Seeds Canada table and conversations about, well, if we do that, how is it going to affect this group? And even though they're not direct stakeholders, it is um, very impressive to see that deliberation that, you know, there is care and consideration for all sectors of, of the value chain, whether or not they're at the table. Um, so, so that is something that is, you know, always part of the deliberations and, and certainly, um, you know, in the AGM conversation, there has been, how do we include these groups and how do we do that outreach, uh, regardless if it's to a specific seed industry partner or even people outside of the seed industry? Sounds simple enough. <laughs> oh, it's simple enough, yes. <laughs> thanks for your time. Okay, well, thanks for the opportunity, Mark. I appreciate it.